Self-determination has been the central message from the Falkland Islands over the past year, and it's a right enshrined at the very start of the Falklands Constitution. Included within these is the right to vote. It's well known that in order to vote in the Falklands, you need to have status. But a lesser known contention has recently arisen. Does being a dual citizen disqualify you? The Constitution says that by virtue of his or her own act, under any acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience or adherence to a foreign power or state, a person cannot qualify to be registered as an elector or qualify to be elected as an MLA. And it's this wording that has caused confusion and raised the possibility that dual nationals cannot vote or stand for election. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, th I think I am fairly clear what I think it means. Um, that will be tested, uh, and and you know um, courts will uh, the court will make a decision as to as to whether that interpretation is the correct interpretation. And what is your interpretation? Well, I, I think if someone has applied for uh, citizenship or confirm or confirmation of citizenship, uh, you know that is an act that they've taken. I think that taking on citizenship of another country puts you under that obligation of obedience, allegiance, etc. And I think, as I say, that every country other than the UK, is a foreign power or state. Um, so that's that's where I would um, say it lies. So my interpretation currently is that those who uh, perhaps have dual nationality by birth, uh, but have naturalised as British citizens, whether in the Falkland Islands or somewhere else, wouldn't necessarily be prohibited from uh, registering to vote or to stand for, for election. This interpretation has become an issue as Emily Barkman has recently received New Zealand status attained by dissent on her father's side. Meaning she could potentially lose not only her seat as an MLA, but also her right to vote, along with an unknown number of other dual citizens in the Falkland Islands. It's disenfranchising. Um, there is nothing in this world that will stop me from loving my country as much as I do, and I always will. And being a dual citizen is has no effect on my home, my, my feelings towards my home. Um, it is absolutely ridiculous. It's the whole reason I took on this job. <laughs> it's because of how much I love my home. And um, it feels incredibly unfair to tell a certain group of people that you aren't valued or as valued or respected to make important decisions on the democracy of this country because of maybe even something that you can't help, which is your heritage. This case, which is likely to end in court, will undoubtedly set a precedent for the voting rights of other individuals. However, every case is different. FITV have spoken to a few dual nationals in the islands and while they did not want to appear on camera, they expressed their concerns about what this means for them and their families. One dual national told us it would be a sad day and an erosion of democracy in the Falklands if the islands restricted the rights of its dual citizens by making voting rights only for those with a British passport and holding no other nationality. It would certainly be a colonial backward step in a modern world for the islands. There is a constitutional review ongoing and the language used in the constitution as well as voting rights are issues that could be explored. I think we, um, we definitely have to look at that. There's, um, certainly the issue that's come up more recently um, really concerns me because, uh, because we're not entirely sure what the implications are. Uh, that's sort of following a process at the moment. And we'll get, um, and, and this, this is where the, the words are so important um, and the interpretation of those words um, become incredibly important. Um, I personally don't believe that it was ever intended that this would be a consequence of that part of the constitution. However, it's written there. Um, now we know we can change the constitution. We did it during COVID, but you know we need to understand what the implications are of this. What's the interpretation, and then we can look to see whether, as as a group of MLAs, we support changing it. And if we do support changing it then, you know, do we have the support of the people to change it? Um, so again, we have to evidence any, uh, any changes to the constitution that, that it has public support. This issue has also raised another point others have made, that despite qualifying for status, they don't qualify to vote as they have a non-British passport. But the issue of dual nationality means that naturalisation as a British citizen may not even see them getting these voting rights.
I'm still Canadian. That's my only citizenship at the moment. And I guess the next step for me would be um, naturalization. And even then, now I'm questioning whether uh, if I was to become a naturalized uh, resident, I guess citizen in the Falklands, can I keep my Canadian citizenship? And then again, what does that mean for me and my future here in the island in terms of voting and any other types of you know, public participation? The conversations surrounding constitutional meaning are complex and diverse. It's an issue that can only be resolved by the highest of courts. But until the point that it is decided, these complex issues are ones felt keenly by those most affected. I go between waves of utter, utter sadness and anger and frustration when I think about this. How could you not? It's such an odd thing, particularly for a country this proud to be free. Ultimately, less than half of the population are currently on the electoral roll in the Falkland Islands and it's unknown how many of those are dual nationals. It's also unknown quite what the implications will be for dual nationals in the Falkland Islands. But what we do know is that this is an issue that won't be going away for quite some time.